The opinions expressed in the following programs are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of Rogers nor Rogers TV. Welcome to Modern Business, the show that bridges the gap between viewer and entrepreneur. I'm your host, Taylor Bercy, and today we are joined by Sabrina Leader. Sabrina owns Preston Gallery in Uxbridge, an art gallery that features artists at all points in their career. Here to talk more about the gallery, please welcome Sabrina. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. So in your words, what exactly is Preston's gallery? We are a I want to say boutique gallery, uh, we're small, but uh, we cater to artists, like you said, at all points of their career. So we're based upon helping the artists, not necessarily being like who's created a career, who's, you know, we're looking at who's emerging, who's doing really great work, um, but also we're only looking at Canadian artists. So we're really drawing a focus to artists from around us. That's incredible. And how does it work with the artists? How do you choose which artist gets featured in your gallery? Yes, yeah, so we have a jurying process. Um, so each month we bring in new artists, new work, new show, uh, which is a lot, <laughs> lot to say, but um, it's a lot of fun. Uh, so we have a jurying process. They submit their work either online or in person. And from there we go through a panel of three people and decide you know, what works together, what doesn't work together, what do we think our clients are gonna like, how can we best support that artist, are we the best fit for that artist? And what made you wanna open up an art gallery in Uxbridge, Ontario. So, uh, funny story, I didn't know I was gonna open an art gallery in Uxbridge. Okay. Um, I found a location that I loved. Um, I knew I wanted to open a gallery, but I was looking in Port Perry and couldn't find a spot that was like really what I was looking for. And somebody said like, hey, there's this building in Uxbridge, it's just gone up for lease. And as soon as I saw it, I fell in love. Um, but I had been lucky in my career up until then, I got a lot of opportunities to show my work and to further my work. And I wanted the opportunity to get that back to other artists. And let's talk a little bit about your career. What brought you into the art industry, if you will? Uh, so it's been a little bit of a weird ride. Um, I started as a student at OCAD University, and in my first year, my grandmother died. I'm and so sorry. Uh, thank you. It's been uh, 10 years. Um, but my first year when she died, uh, my uncle, after the funeral, offered me a opportunity to shoot for the Ottawa Senators. Uh, so I got to shoot a game and a practice. And from there, I had these photos, and I didn't know what to do with them. So I sent them to the Hawk Hall of Fame and was like, would you like these? Uh, I can't do anything, there's copyright, yada, yada, yada. And I got an email back offering me an internship. Amazing. Uh, which I thought was like the greatest thing ever. Uh, so I started there my second year of university, scanning all the old slides and film and all that, getting hands-on experience. Uh, all while doing the fine arts still at school, but I started falling in love more with the hockey photography. Um, so I pursued that more and more, and that kind of led into a couple jobs there. Uh, I got really great opportunity. I worked for the NHL through the Hockey Hall of Fame, scanning all the oldest photos that they had. And then when that ran out, I kind of decided I wanted to just do my own thing. I wanted to focus on my art, and that's where the gallery came from. And that's where Preston came from, was the Stanley Cup gave me a gallery. <laughs> oh, very cool. So you've kind of blended your past with your future to exactly. create your present. Oh, that is incredible. So let's talk a little bit about the logistical side of the gallery. I know we talked about how you bring in new artists every month and it's done by a jury panel to kind of, I guess, vote on which artists will be featured. Yeah, because I might not like something, but somebody else might love it. So it's really art so opinionated that I didn't want it just to be about, hey, I like this artist. It needed to be about other people because I might not love an artist to start with, but somebody else is like, oh my God, that's the greatest thing I've ever seen. So it's just taste there. So I have a million questions when it comes to this panel. First of all, how does one get on the panel? So we, I've chosen artists that I've known from the past, that I've worked with, um, that have become close friends. Uh, so that way it's easy to kind of bounce ideas off of. So we don't really change out our panel. Um, might ask another person on the side, like, hey, what do you think of this? We're undecided. Um, but our panel is really those three core people that have been with me since the start of the gallery. And how many artists get featured in the gallery at once? So per month, uh, we try and stick around nine to 10 artists on the walls and about two sculpture artists, um, but we represent over 74 artists. Wow, because yeah. that was gonna be the follow-up question with the jury panel. What happens if you get 30 great artists from an open casting call, if you will? Do you spread those out over a couple of months or do you do a new panel every month? Yeah, so we try to um, work the artists to see what months work for them. Okay. 
Okay. Um, so if we're full in one month, we might go back to theirs and say, hey, we really love your work, but we have no space until March. Would you like to wait till then? Or hey, can we offer you something in the future? We really don't want to lose you, but we also don't want to just shove you in, just to make sure we have you. And do you have reoccurring artists at the gallery that constantly get spots? We do. Walls? So we have uh, probably about five or six artists that have been with us for a while. Uh, we have a couple artists that book just full year. They're like, I don't want to lose my spot, book me for a full year, um, which has been great. So it's been so amazing to see their work evolve over the years. Um, and then we have other artists that were like, hey, we'll keep two spots open for those artists that are like our core artists that have been with, you know, believed in the gallery in the start and still want to come back and show with us. So when you say spots, are they hanging one piece of art and that's their spot or do you give them a section where they can hang three or four pieces? So we give a section, um, so it's about six feet of space, I tell them, but um, it's not a section together. So they're spread out with other artists, their work might not all be clustered together. It's really about showing people how you could hang different works together in your own home. Okay, um, So cool. taking a realism painting and putting an extra to abstract might work really well together because those paintings go but if you hung them separate, people might not say that you could do that. So they might have a piece at home and be like, oh, could I put that with it? We're trying to show them that you can. So when the artist gets selected, they get their section. Is it by a month by month basis for just the everyday artist that's entering the process versus those evergreen artists that you have? So we're happy to offer a year to any artist that wants it. Okay. Um, we also have a three month package, a single month package. We're really working with the artist. So my whole goal is what works for you and how can we help you? So if you come and say, hey, I have a jury show this month, I have another show this month, but I really want to do three months, we'll break it up. Okay. Uh, we can spread it throughout the year, whatever works best for you. That's very accommodating of you. So when you say packages, these artists are applying to have wall space on your gallery. If they are selected, do they pay a fee to hang their art? Is that yeah, so we charge a monthly fee um, and a lower commission. So what that does is allows us to kind of factor in what we're doing, making sure like, you know, we're not gonna be closing our doors the next month, but it also allows us to give a fee that's a uh, commission that's less so the artist can really focus into their own artwork and say, hey, instead of losing 60% of my work, you know, to the gallery, I can actually make money off this and I can make this a career where I can, you know, do this full time. Right, which is something that you're very passionate about and you're giving that opportunity to others. Exactly, yeah. I've had some galleries and I applied and then after I applied they're like, hey, it's a 60% commission. I'm like, okay, so in order to make any work off my money off my work, I had to price this so why nobody's going to buy it. So it didn't work for me, uh, even though it was like this prestigious gallery and stuff, there was no way I could even afford to print my work and hang it there. So. Is there a kind of standard percentage commission that you think is universally fair or does it vary based on the artist and what they're delivering? Uh, so we have a universal one, but okay. from gallery to gallery it's going to vary. So some galleries are going to charge 40%, 50%, 60%. Wow. Uh, I've heard of some galleries charging as much as 80%, uh, so only 20% goes back to the artist. Um, we're at 25 percent so we're on the lower end of everything, um, but 25 to 50 is not unheard of, like that's standard. And do you think that incentivizes artists to reach out to you to get spots on your wall? Some, I think, um, makes a difference for some. Others are like, hey, I'm already in other galleries, I'm already factoring big commissions, I'm okay with paying more. And how does inventory work? When you're working with other artists, do they supply you? I know you said you, they get six feet of wall space. Do they supply you with enough to cover 12 feet just in case something sells? Yeah, it depends on the artist and how far they're coming from. So we have artists coming from Nova Scotia, so she'll send extra work when she mails it, knowing it's all gonna fit, um, but just making sure she doesn't have to send some like two days later because we sold a piece. Um, other artists that are from Oxford will be like, oh, just give me a call, I'll stop by. Um, okay. So it just depends on where they are and how much work they actually have in their studio. Um, some artists have like are like, hey, I got a full studio, take as much as you want. Others are like, I'll have to paint something new if you sell something. Okay, so sometimes there's a bit more of a turnaround if they do sell exactly. the piece. Is that difficult for you to manage or would you just fill that spot with another artist's work? We usually just fill it until we can get their work in or just kind of move things around so it just doesn't look as empty. Um, but most, we haven't really run into that. It's usually like, hey, we sold it, we get a piece the next day. And being a gallery owner yourself and being an artist yourself, do you find it difficult to showcase other people's work over your own or with yours? <laughs> How does that work? I have the exact opposite problem oh, really? um, You could ask most people that come into the gallery and they're all like, where's your work? And I'm like, oh, it's in the basement. <laughs> uh, I opened the gallery to show my own work and, you know, have some artists and now it's the exact opposite. I have 
one piece of my own up, and that's it uh, in the whole entire gallery. Why do you think that is? I don't, I honestly couldn't tell you. I really want to make sure it's a focus on the artists. Um, you know, it's about them. My work can come second to that. Um, it's, you know, that's why I started this, was for them. So as much as I love my own work and want to show my own work, I'm like, I can find other venues to do that in. That is very um, funny. You create your own venue to showcase work and you're looking for other venues. Exactly, yeah. It's catch 22. Well, it's it's very nice that you want to support others and encourage others, but I would encourage people listening to this who drop by your gallery to push you to show some of your own work. Because that's why there's one on the wall. <laughs> that's good. You know what? Baby steps. Yeah, we're trying to satisfy everybody there, so. Well, hey, that's okay. So you don't just have other artists work at your gallery you also wholesale some artistic supplies and other things so what do you offer at pressing gallery a little bit of everything um so with the pandemic um and everything shutting down we heard from a lot of artists right off the bat is they couldn't get art supplies uh there was shipping delays there was art stores shutting down um, we lost curries in durham so that meant we had no art supply stores okay um, so we, I went, okay, what do you need? And started looking into it. So we started bringing in Canadian made paints, uh, paint brushes, papers, canvases, anything the artists needed, we started bringing in, um, just to help them, uh, really. And it kind of helped us through the pandemic and it kept us going. So now we've expanded again, uh, with the art supplies. So we now carry even more. Um, but we also do framing, we also do printing, um, Basically, if you, it has something to do with the art and you need it done, we could probably find a way to get it done. And is it you doing it or do you hire other artists? All me. <laughs> All you? All me. So you wholesale art supplies, you have a framing. Is that for your photography or anybody's photography? Anybody's photography. So we, you can walk in off with a piece that your grandmother had and, hey, I don't like the frame, we'll get it reframed for you. You do custom printing? We do custom printing up to 44 inches and we can also print on canvas now, which is exciting so for the longest time had a small printer couldn't do any big posters or anything and upgraded that so now we have all different types everything's archival museum quality whole bit wow and are you also and are you also uh doing photography in your studio do you have a photography studio as yeah well? so the gallery kind of transforms um so the idea when i originally rented the space was hey the downstairs is gonna be a photography studio upstairs is gonna be a gallery okay Ceilings were high enough in the basement to run the lights, so now the gallery kind of just transforms into my studio. So I do headshots a lot, family photo shoots, um, go to your property and take pictures of you and your family there. Um, I still do the hockey photography too. Um, so kind of anything you need except for weddings, I'm happy to help with <laughs> photography services on. Uh, I also do scanning and restoration services, so that happens in the gallery. You can bring in your old photos. So it's not just about new photos, it's also about preserving what you already have. Incredible. And on that note, we are going to take a quick break. We will be right back with Sabrina from Preston Gallery. is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. Hey, do you like movies? You know I do. That's why I see all of them. And if you want to know which ones you should see too, check out the latest cinema scene reviews and interviews. They're hot, fresh, and delicious, and they're online at rogerstv.com slash cinemascene, popcorn not included. This offer is available everywhere. Tell your friends, be the first on your block to click rogerstv.com slash cinemascene. It's so nice, we have to mention it twice. Hi, I'm Constable Gerald Rice, Durham Regional Police Service. Tune into Rogers Cable 10 to watch me on Senior Talk with DRPS but we'll talk about all kinds of amazing information and community programs for you, our seniors in Durham Region. Hi, I'm Sean Lackey and this is Sold with Sean Lackey. You should check us out if you want to find out what's going on in the world of real estate. We'll have all sorts of guests to keep you in the loop on what's going on in this wonderful world.
watching Rogers TV. Welcome back to Modern Business, the show that bridges the gap between viewer and entrepreneur. I'm your host, Taylor Bercy, and we are joined by Sabrina Leader of Preston Gallery. Now, Sabrina, when we left for the break, you kind of gave us a little teaser that you were working on some restoration work at the gallery. How did you get started in that? Why are you doing it? Yeah, so um, when I was at the Hawk Hall of Fame, I kind of got tossed into it. Um, one of my coworkers came up with this ripped and torn photo uh, that he wanted to pass down to his kids. It was of his grandfather. And uh, as it stood, it was in pieces, and there was no way of kind of just scanning it and giving it to them or just giving it to them as is. So I was, you know, kind of told, like, hey, can you fix this? <laughs> and lo and behold, I could. So I've kind of used those skills over the years, refined them down more, done restorations for the Hawk Hill of Fame, and now I just do them for people's own memories of, you know, your family memories that are important. I couldn't imagine how special that makes people feel when they see a photo that holds so close to them, damaged, and you're able to fix it. But I have to ask, how do you fix it? So everything's done digitally. Um, so I think that's one of the biggest things when you say photo restorations, everybody's like, oh, you're gonna fix like the original. It's, no, 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 I scan it and you get that right back. Um, I don't want to kind of ruin any memories there because it has gone through time and it's a part of its story still. Um, but then I just take everything digitally into Photoshop and you know we can rebuild faces, legs, hands, um, whatever it is and get it looking well. That's incredible. And then you also have the framing side of your business where you can frame it up real nice and give it to somebody as a gift. Exactly. So if somebody was to just walk off the street with let's say an artistic idea, the vibe that I'm getting is you'll make it happen. Try my best or I'll recommend somebody that can. So, you wow. know, turning to other people is one of the things I do, but if I can't do it, I'll figure out who can. Incredible, and I know that listening to you speak today, and I think people watching this, there's no doubt that you have extreme passion for what you do and supporting other people. And one of the features that you have at your business that I think is incredible is a art gallery exchange with a gallery in Quebec. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so it's a newer thing for us. Uh, we started that back in September. Okay. Um, so we, my cousin works for another gallery down there, um, and the owner is a great guy. Uh, metal artist. Uh, we have some of his work in the gallery. Uh, but there was kind of this idea of like, how can we both benefit from artists that we normally wouldn't get? So they have a lot of Quebec artists. We have a lot from Ontario. Um, and how can we kind of work with each other to help those artists? So from there, we've kind of started up this exchange. They take five of our artists, we take five of theirs, and we kind of switch back and forth. Um, so it brings new work to the people up here, brings new work to their clients, and everybody kind of win win. And are you physically sending those works or digitally selling them? Uh, physically. So oh, okay. um, I drive down or he drives up and uh, we kind of trade off. Um, you know, we've had, he's delivered pieces of his own up here that we've done commissions for clients or whatnot. Um, so when he comes up with that, he might bring a couple pieces from the other artists that are going into the exchange. Wow. And you know, I guess that would involve a lot of marketing and outsourcing for these artists to get exposure and both provinces, if you will. Can you talk to us a little bit about how you've marketed your gallery? Yeah, um, so a lot of Facebook, Instagram, newspaper ads. Um, it's been just a lot of word of mouth too. Um, so connecting with the artists, they connect with other people. Um, you know, Instagram has been a great thing for us, posting up, everything's, you know, about pictures, about seeing the work, but a lot's about getting people to come in. Um, so advertising like, hey, we're not too far from Toronto, um, you know, it's a quick little drive up, but seeing the work in person, um, really there's nothing like it. Because you have quite the inviting storefront right on the Main Strip and Uxbridge. Big windows, everyone can see it. And I can imagine some people being a little bit intimidated to walk in, feeling like maybe they have to commit immediately. But the vibe that I'm getting from you is very much, you want people to come in, experience and fall in love. And there's not really a pressure environment, more of an appreciation environment? Exactly. So my whole belief is that you should like the art that you hang on your walls. Don't buy it because somebody told you to, buy it because you like it. Um, even if it's an investment, you still have to live with it. So unless you're sticking it in a closet and you're never going to look at it again for 10 years until you sell it, you have to like it. So coming in, you know, we change it out each month, so coming in more than once until you find that piece that really resonates with you or you can't get out of your head is really important with our clients. But come in, look, don't touch. That's exactly. a vibe, right? Yeah. We have a couple things you could touch, you know, ask for touching, but, um, you know, most is, yeah, look, don't touch. 
And would you say that the majority of your sales are in person at the gallery sales or more so online? Uh, it's more in person still. Um, the art supply is a bit more online. We're starting to kind of expand, uh, especially with the website and shipping. So we've sent works from out to Nova Scotia to BC, uh, both supplies and artworks themselves. That's incredible. And talk to me about the purchasing process. So if I walked into your gallery today, selected a piece of art off the wall and said, I wanna buy this, but I don't know if I wanna walk out here with this. Can you ship it to me? Do you do that? Yep, or? we do free, free delivery within the GTA. Okay. Um, so if you're kind of within, right now, 50 kilometers, say, no problem, we'll get it to you, no problem. Drop it at your door, wrapped up. Um, outside the GTA, we're happy to wrap it up, box up, mail it right to your door, um, or you can walk out with it if that's your choice. And what's the shipping process like when you do send out that product? Because I guess they're all one of a kind, delicate pieces. You know, is it an all-inclusive shipping price? Are you doing custom shipping and figuring it out as you go? So if you buy online, we custom quote everything with the art pieces, uh, unless they're smaller. Okay. So any of the bigger pieces that are awkward, we're gonna custom quote that out. Make sure you're getting it as quick as possible and with full insurance, because we don't want anything happening to it. Um, with the smaller pieces, we know, hey, we can box it up. We kind of have a rough idea of the rates. So if you're checking online, it'll automatically give you that. Otherwise, we'll say there's a custom quote gonna come for the shipping. Okay, so they have to wait till after to get that quote and then? Usually, same day. Okay. Um, pretty good on it, and it's usually between 60 and $100 for big pieces. And when you're making that significant of an investment, you want to make sure that it's protected. That's it. And for the big, big ones, we're more than happy to drive them to you. You know, I've offered to deliver pieces to Ottawa because I don't really want to mail that, just in case something happened to it. Okay, good for you. So. Clearly you are very passionate about making sure that this art stays in one piece and all that good stuff. Yeah, the last thing I want to do is call an artist or call a client and say, hey, sorry, UPS just called us and something happened to the package or client calls us and says, hey, something happened, it got stolen off my porch. Yeah. So I'd rather get it directly into their hands as much as possible. And I would hope that that would incentivize people to shop local and work with you and the local artists because of that extra added value piece of truly caring and believing in the product and making sure it gets to you safely by any means. Yeah, I think it does really help. Um, you know, we've had a lot of clients say like, it's been a great experience to shop with us. It's nice to know that we're handling their piece like they'd want it to be handled. Um, you know, we're caring for it as if it was our own piece going into their, our home. And obviously you've had a lot of growth since opening your gallery, especially with the volume of artists that come through. So. Is it just you behind the operation, or do you have a team of people? Uh, so it's me, mostly. Uh, my parents have helped immensely. I'm really thankful for that, and some of the artists have helped too. Uh, in May, we expanded, so we have now one full part-time employee, uh, which I absolutely love her, and I tell her all the time, <laughs> I, if she quits, I will cry. Oh. Because <laughs> um, she has been fantastic, and it's so nice to have somebody that the clients trust and work with well. And was it hard for you to release control to that employee to sell oh. that art? Mm. Yeah, um, so I had to hire somebody because I was going away f on vacation with a good friend of mine. Good for you. And so I was like, oh my God, I'm leaving my baby for the first time. I haven't gone anywhere. And we went out west and I was like, I'm not gonna have cell service part of the time. So I was really thankful I found um, Abby and she's been amazing. And I was also glad that I left right away because my friend was like, you know what, she's got it. Like, What's the worst that can happen? Like, she's, she's gonna call you if something happens, it's fine. Uh, which really helped put my mind at ease the whole time and enjoy being away. And what did happen when you hired Abby? Yeah, I hate that part. Um, <laughs> I hate that I had to say this. Uh, within her first week of being left alone, the tornado hit. Uh, so she was there alone in the gallery. Um, I was on a beach in Vancouver in the sunshine, having no idea what was happening here. And got a call um, saying, hey, like, you know, I'm gonna close the store for the day. Still, like, nobody would tell me what was happening in Uxbridge. Everybody's like, oh, you're on vacation, don't worry about it. Uh, and I came back, you know, I eventually found out that they went just the street behind us. Okay. Um, and luckily her mom was across the street, so she was safe and she was, you know, handled it quite well, but uh, I was nervous for her. And when I say, what's the worst that can happen? I'm never saying that again when I leave. <laughs> Right, the worst thing that could happen is a tornado in that yeah. circumstance, and that did happen. And we got very lucky, though. I'm very thankful for that. I was going to say, the, the great thing is nobody was hurt. Your gallery seems to be okay, and 
talk to us a little bit about the post tornado journey for you. You know, did you have any significant damage, any insurance issues, anything like that? No, we actually had no damage, which I was so thankful for. Uh, we lost a little A-frame sign that was left in the building when we got the unit, so it wasn't even like it was like ours or anything. Um, I got pictures of that sent to me, and then uh, my dad went by and checked on the place because like, oh my god, what if there's water in the basement um, or something happened? And there was nothing. Uh, our fridge defrosted, and that was the biggest thing, um, which not a big deal. Right. Uh, but with all the glass windows, like you mentioned before, my fear was that something had hit the windows and broken the windows. Um, but luckily, nothing, and we got very, very lucky. And how long did it take you to reopen after that? Uh, we were closed for about a week, I think. Okay. Uh, and that was just because we had no power. Um, so we were just waiting for the power to come back on, and I was away. So it was one of those things where I came back, and I think it was a full week, because I think I just got back when the power came back on. Right, and now that that situation has happened with Abby and she has handled it with such grace, I'm sure you're feeling very secure with your hire now. Uh, yeah. Excited for the future. You know, if you can get through that, I think you can get through anything. So I was, I was glad when she came back because I wasn't, I probably wouldn't have. Uh, <laughs> you know, boss leaves you alone, you're running a business, and tornado concert, I don't think I'm going back to that place. Uh, but she's been great since, um, you know, been no problems. That's awesome. Now, looking forward into the future, where do you think Preston Gallery is going? Oh, good question. <laughs> um, hopefully expanding. Uh, that's the main goal. Um, but we'd like to kind of keep it to our roots, too. So keep with the artists, keep working with the artists, um, just maybe a bit bigger of a space. Incredible. Now, do you have a trade tip for our audience today, a piece of advice that somebody's given you, a piece of advice that you like to give to others, or just a general tidbit of business information? Yeah, um, so my biggest tip would be don't be afraid to hire other people. Um, okay. We hired Take Root Creative to help build our website, and it was the best decision ever made. Um, you know, I tried doing it myself. It did not work. I admitted defeat, hired somebody, and it's so much easier. Um, so don't be afraid and don't be too stubborn. <laughs> and when you say you hired this outside company, Take Root Creative, to build your website, was that the e-commerce portion or the entire thing? Uh, so they built it all from scratch. Um, so they did us a full Shopify website. We had one before, um, but it wasn't shoppable. It wasn't as easy to update. Um, so I went to them and said, hey, I want something that's easy and I can understand. And they built us a full Shopify, explained how to use it, did everything for us, which has been great. And were you initially intimidated to put that investment in? A little bit. Um, it was one of those things where I was like, I kind of, I think I need to do this. And especially when COVID hit, it was like, okay, I really need to do this. But I'm stubborn and was like, I can do this myself. And I tried and failed twice. Um, and eventually just said, hey, no, I, I need to put that aside and hire somebody that knows what they're doing. I think that's great. I think it's a great thing to be able to admit that I tried it, it didn't necessarily work, but it doesn't mean it can't work, I just need help. Exactly. So, good on you. Thank you so much for joining us today, Sabrina. This has been another episode of Modern Business. I'm your host, Taylor Bercy, and we'll be back next time. the Rogers TV viewer response line. Email us or connect with us on social media. journalism students. Omni Television is once again awarding scholarships to qualified students pursuing a career in third language journalism. The Omni Scholarship has been really conducive to my development as a journalist and it's